When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and a sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on to the wind, walk on to the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with faith in your heart and your Everybody and good morning and welcome to the Copite Church. Yes, we are a little late this morning, but it's a beautiful sunny day here. It hasn't necessarily been a sunny week all week for Liverpool though, has it? Oh, we did have a little bit of an off night <laughs> this week. But you know what? That's why you never walk alone. It's such a great song. Because Liverpool keeps walking on and walking on. And nothing will change the fact that we are still the champions of the league. Isn't that right? So, hello and welcome to this program for all those who love and support Liverpool Football Club. And now... Just to remind you, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, to heal us. He lived and died to buy my pardon and empty grave is it to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can think because he lives all fear is gone because I know I know he holds a future and life is worth the living just because he joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives and then one day Because he lives 
There you go, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Now, as we start talking today of some of the serious things, let it be understood from the outset. And I'm David Griffiths, my wife Lindsay here. Hello, everybody. Hello. Let it be understood from the outset that as a couple, married couple of many years, over 30 years, there's not a racist bone in our body that we brought up our children uh, within people from the Asian community, both mm -hmm. in India, Sri Lanka, and in Great Britain. And, you know, we love mixing with different cultures, races, background, all of this. But we don't find Black Lives Matter actually the movement that is actually cares about black lives mm -hmm. That's right. because if they did they would be outside the abortion clinics where per head of population in america we have american figures far more children are aborted from wombs of black people mm. per head of population far more four or five times so many. sad that instead of campaigning for those black lives to matter, they actually give money to Planned Parenthood, mm. we understand, to bring more deaths of black people. They also want to remove not only uh, bad parts of history, but also good parts of history too. Mm. And you can't change history. What you can do is change the injustices of today. That's which is why on our scroll to the side of Lindsay and I, it says no to political statements, gestures and racism. And when Lindsay and I are watching the football match and it goes to this countdown for the players to bend their knee, we have to turn over mm. because it turns us over. It upsets us so much because it's not standing for Black Lives Matter. It's standing for... A political ideal, mm. a Marxist ideal, co-founder of Black Lives Matter movement, Paris Collas said, quote unquote, I am a trained Marxist, mm. leading um, statesman in the United States, Rudy Giuliani, declared Black Lives Matter to be a Marxist generation. Mm. And one of the parts of Marxism is to remove history. But I don't want to remove history. We used to sing on the cop, if you know your history. And we remember many white lives being slaughtered at the original battle of Spy and Cop. Yes. Many from yeah. Liverpool and Lancashire in trenches set up by Cecil Rhodes, who was a bad man. Mm. But not only to black people, but also to white people too, including those from Liverpool and from Lancashire, who were set up in the trenches mm. to be the cannon fodder for the Boers. Mm. And around the corner were the Zulus. And he was more interested, Cecil Rhodes, in making his fortune out of anything that moved. Mm. He had a heart of a heart of a very hard man. And so when we say all lives matter, we mean it. Because we mm. don't distinguish in this ministry between any colour. Our love goes out to all. Mm. But we do not believe that a political gesture which bending the knee is, is the right way forward. We do not believe proclaiming the name of a political entity, which Black Lives Matter is, all over football grounds, on football shirts, even taking the names mm. of the players, is the right thing to do, but a very wrong one. Because is the Premier League saying we're supporting Marxism? Is the Premier League saying we now can take up a political identity? Well, we say no to political statements, mm. gestures, and racism. The people from all political persuasions and creeds 
should be able to go freely to football grounds, all colours too, and not have to be embarrassed by political gestures, political statements, which frankly make our tummies turn over. Mm. We hate it. But we love people of all races. And there's a lot of talk about people being offended and the fence acts, which we're opposed to, by the way. I mean, part of life is having disagreements and not being offended. But I can tell you we are deeply spiritually offended mm. by the bending the knee actions because it's taking no note of government response government cabinet ministers have said they would not do this because they stand against racism but also do not believe that marxism is the answer to racism and we need to address political opportunities for people from all colors races we do need to address some inequalities but it's not done through a political ideology it's done for people who with big hearts and one thing we can say by looking at the videos from liverpool football club particularly sponsored through nivea that they go around people who are having hard times mm. and they go knocking on doors and there's a player or get seeing granddad on the computer which the daughters put him on to see a Liverpool player like oh. Hendo and so forth and they're excited. Mm. There's a big heart in Liverpool Football Club but it should never be one of political statements or gesture. It should be care and love for all. That's Liverpool Football Club. I trust you hear us because we are offended by the bending the knee because mm. it doesn't stand for Black Lives Matter. By far more black lives in America are killed within the black community than by white police people. And whilst what happened to George Floyd was horrendous, it frankly wouldn't happen in our country, here in Britain. It's not the same context. The context of American policing is that everyone in the country has a gun, so they trust nobody. Yeah. And so from there comes an aggression to everybody from the police in America. Mm. They can be very hard to everybody. Mm. But please don't think that you can place the American context into Britain, because you can't. A lot of work has been done with the police and there is a lot of tension over stop and search. Mm. But if a car gets found on the police computer to be linked with drugs or linked to any kind of crime, the police are going to stop us. The recent case over the last week in the south of England, I think it was, where a car was stopped with a black footballer. And he's making a complaint that he's been picked on. Well, the car, Lindsay, had tinted windows. They couldn't see which colour okay. the person was. <laughs> and what happened is number came up on a police computer showing that this man could have guns. Well, in the end, the, the computer was wrong. Mm -hmm. And he is completely innocent man. But he wasn't picked on because he was black. No. He was picked on because the car came up on the police computer. And we must come out of these tensions. Mm. We must have love amongst the races. I know that people on the spying cop in my day, we all used to look after each other from whatever background we came from. We were fellow copites. And so when we say no to political statements, gestures and racism, we are saying yes to anti-racism campaigns. Like the one they used to have in the football. No to racism. No to say no to racism. Yeah. What was wrong with that? I yes. don't really know what was they wrong with that. They took on a political ideal mm. rather than a simple statement of mm. no to racism. 
And so we pray in the Coppite Church of a realization. We thought it had been realized. We thought it had come to an end. Yet we see it still going on. Mm. And I believe it's having effects on Liverpool's results. My own son can't watch, he will not watch, this is John, lives in North Wales, we in Scotland. He won't watch Liverpool games now because of that gesture. Yeah. Because it's a political gesture. He wants to support his team without political gestures. John is not racist at all. Anyone no, I, is against racism. It's our John. He was in absolutely behind the say no to racism coming. Fully behind, but he doesn't understand why they've turned away from that and gone on to the Black because Lives Matter. Because he's not a Marxist. Mm. And neither are we. Um, we actually like the socialism of Shankly. Yet he wasn't a Marxist. He simply cared for people like the Tall Puddle Martyrs did, like yeah, Keir Hardy yes. did, like Viscount Tony Pandy did. He was a genuine democratic, what you would call socialist. But there's something different about what is connected with the New World Order, a form mm -hmm. of controlling Marxism, coming from the Constantine Ankh, which is all around Karl Marx's grave if you want to visit it, if you've got eight, about eight pounds to get into the graveyard and realize that it's not only a political statement but a religious mm. one too that's why when they're bowing the knee it seems almost like they're bowing the knee to other gods yeah and i i feel sadio and mo could well as muslims could well be um uh, upset about that but possibly afraid to say so because they get hit by uh, social media mm. as being racist if you don't bend any. That's right. It's not right. There's many Christians no. too in the Liverpool team. And a Christian would not bend any. But a Christian would give his life for his friends. Indeed, Sadio and Mo, Sadio's heart of going to the mosque and doing all the dirty jobs and caring for mm, people, sending money wonderful. to Senegal, and Mo sent money to a poor area of Egypt. Oh, this is wonderful mm -hmm. because they actually are putting into practice what, in effect, they're preaching of caring and loving others less fortunate than themselves. Yeah. And let's have more of that. Yes. And let's have more fighting injustices of today, like the slave trade in Leicester. In effect, it's a slave trade. About 30, 40 people living in a small terrace house paid £3.50 an hour so as to work in sweatshops mm. for fancy uh, shops, designer shops on Oxford Street. Mm. It's not right. And we need to have um, campaigns to fight for justice. Mm. But they're not political campaigns. They're caring and loving campaigns, whereas Black Lives Matter is very political. Mm -hmm. And so I trust you hear our heart today we love our team, Liverpool Football Club, but we don't like it mixed up with political entities, but do like it getting involved in social injustice, but not politically, and that all the players would be comfortable with whatever happens. Yes. This is our heart. Thank you, Lindsay. We'll see you soon. We're late starting today. Those of you waiting for us on live stream, so many issues were happening here that we had to deal with, um, which we have dealt with. And the calling of the Lord was that we dealt with them and then come and start our program a little later. So if you've been waiting with the Coppite Church, please forgive us. But it's been worth waiting for to share these things which we've been talking about. We care for all black lives, including the black children in wombs. We care for the black lives who die at the hands of fellow blacks. You see, we do not like this. It's all the fault of the white man. You know, the Bible doesn't say that. It says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Whatever colour you will be. You know, at Sunday school, I used to sing, Jesus loves the little children. 
all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And I believe all this has had a spiritual impact on the final games of the season. Mm. Yes, the team have missed the 12th man, which is invaluable. Millions of pounds could not buy the copies. But I believe there has been a spiritual tension going on throughout the game, which has affected the games. I'm convinced that not all players want to bend a knee, but are afraid to in case they get castigated on social media as being racist. Mm -hmm. No, you're not racist if you don't bend a knee. The Bible says, by their fruits you will know them. And we've named some of the fruits from our team. The genuine care and love to people less fortunate. Mm. And let that always be the case. Shankly respected. Those who were less fortunate than his team. He used to say that these men, I'm sure he was referring to women too, I've worked all week to come here. This is their release. This is their breakthrough. Your result, what you do today, will either make or break the coming week. It was known in Liverpool that factory production produ productivity went up substantially on a Liverpool win. <laughs> and that's the nature of Liverpool. Liverpool being a port has people over many years of all backgrounds and colours. Indeed, as we know, it was a centre of the evil slave trade. But as we expressed a couple of weeks ago on the Coppite Church, it was Christians like William Wilberforce, John Newton, who got saved whilst being a captain of a slave trip off the coast of Donegal in Ireland. And you can go now to County Donegal and you go to Amazing Grace Country. A village where many of the IRA uh, military are now based, but in their retirement in pension of bungalows. Mm -hmm. And it's called Amazing Grace Country. And we support in the Coppite Church, not sectarianism, but forgiveness and love and understanding. Over the last week, we've seen the death of Jack Charlton. I was one who sung at him on the cop, you dirty big giraffe. And big Jack used to wave back with a big smile. He's not a man of malice, but a man of humour. And for an Englishman to become Irish team manager at the time of political tensions between Catholic and Protestant, he did a remarkable job. He became the most popular Englishman in Ireland. <laughs> and still is, because there's still many hurts in relation to the potato famine. But Jack would put all that aside. Put the political tensions aside, what we've been talking about here. And bring together the Irish spirit to produce a football team from a small country that did so well in the Italia World Cup. And of course he became a national hero by beating Bobby Robson's England 1-0 in Dublin. Jack Charlton was a man who embraces love to all rather than sectarian hatreds and racism. He was a character and a great player of Leeds United who've just been promoted again, our old re rivals. And that old rivalry will begin again next year at Anfield and Ellen Road. Let's trust the crowds are back because without crowds that game's nothing. 
Leeds United competed with Liverpool in a part of our history which will be closely remembered. Don Revy and Bill Shankly knew each other well. They were great rivals. And we know the football again needs to be football. It wasn't a political rivalry. It was a rivalry on the pitch. In those days we wouldn't be talking about the promotion of a political identity. Shankly's socialism being one of care for the people rather than political ideal. We need to come back to those old values. Not have forced upon us having to do gestures which are of opposite persuasion, even to that of the Premier League, for without capitalism there would be no Premier League. There'd be no sponsors, there'd be no television companies to cover the games. There'd be no meat pies at the match which are baked by capitalist um, companies. So we know that the players don't mean it. And are the Premier League afraid to back down from us? Because it's part of what's known as woke culture. We are allowed to say certain things but not others. The Apostle Peter, he ministered in an environment of political tensions. But the early church did not fall down to the political mood of the moment but heard from God who never changes because from one generation to another political mood can dramatically change. Mm. And we read Peter from the first epistle, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus and Galatia. Pontus being the European side of present-day Istanbul. Galatia, well, as Copites, we all know Galatia. It was in Galatia we won the 2005 European Champions League with Steven Gerrard. Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. In other words, he was ministering to a number of racial groups, a number of cultural groups, but not from a political position, but from a God position. God who loves us all. Paul declared them to be elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now can we have harmony and peace between different racial groups and those of different nationalities and cultures? There was a vastly different culture between Pontius and Galatia. Then Peter continues to say to them all, as we say to all racial groups, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us. Meaning that has made us who have accepted Christ as Lord and Saviour of the same substance as the Father. What a promise. And this promise is to different racial, cultural groupings. Peter goes on to describe this as a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Liverpool Football Club, I believe, showed us how to set up a fight against injustice campaign. The ladies who set up the Justice for the 96 group show everything that's necessary to fight injustice. 
They took on no political ideal, yet exposed Freemasonry as one of the reasons why everything was being suppressed out of Hillsborough. That is a religious, not a political group. One which is biased against those who are not of their own. It is these injustices we need to fight. And we need to fight this together as one. And all Coppites came together with this group fighting for justice for the dear souls who passed away at Hillsborough those years ago. And how we should follow that lead. A justice and freedom for all campaign we would support with all of our hearts. And Peter refers to an inheritance, incorruptible. You know, in history, we know the story of Gandhi in South Africa. <laughs> A trained lawyer in London, unable to travel first class because of his colour. And he wasn't black, he was from India. Yet was seen as a second class citizen. But this is not the case, uh, thank God, in our nation. Let us remember and give thanks to the Lord for that. And it was Christians who brought the conditions for that freedom to manifest, like William Wilberforce, John Newton, who we've already mentioned, and others. Freedom is worth fighting for whereas political ideals commonly are not. And the Bible refers to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And these are the last times. These are the tensions of the last time. Free speech is being suppressed. Neil Oliver recently talking that whenever free speech is suppressed, that is the time there is always a war throughout history. And we are in those days. We've gone through a massive pandemic. I believe we're going to go through a period of unprecedented tensions between nationalities. But let us remember, those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ have an inheritance incorruptible, an undefiled inheritance that can only be obtained through the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if you are hurting today, if you are suffering today, the Lord Jesus is here to give you love, to give you his life, that you, like him, be begotten of the Father, of the same substance, that you may receive his love, whatever color you may be. So please hear our heart today. We're saying no to political statements. No to political gestures. No to racism. But for these ideals we need to come to Jesus Christ. Who through his blood can make us begotten of the Father. Lindsay, come and sing this lovely Thank song. Thank you, David. He touched me. Yeah, this is, is a really beautiful song. It's all about healing and how it's all through Jesus. The same yesterday, today, and forever. It's never changed. He can do it. The first verse goes, Shackled by a heavy burden, Neath a load of guilt and shame, Then the hand of Jesus touched me, And now I am no longer the same. I'm almost there, Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, is the orchestra ready? Are you all right, lad? <laughs> Are you all right there, Dave? We've got the band going now. <laughs> 
here coming up, listen. <laughs> Love right. it. Uh, you, 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 you're on, you want your overtime. Uh, you're not getting your overtime. Oh, here it is anyway. Come on, boys, let's hear the music. <laughs> that touch from him and God bless you bye till next Copite Church <laughs>